Good morning, students. Today we will start with a new chapter that is microbes in human welfare. So before beginning this chapter, I would like to ask a question, which you can see on the screen. Can microbes be helpful? Now, to answer the above question, what we need to know is that what microbes actually are. So we can say that microbes are unicellular or multicellular organism that can be easily seen under a microscope. Why? Because they are so tiny, they are so small that can be easily observed under a microscope. Now, these microbes can even be the cause of death. For example, if we say plague. Now, what plague is? Plague is something that can wipe out an entire range of population. Humans have been in a constant battle with microbes since 7th century with the outbreak of measles and till date with Ebola virus. So we can say that microbes are considered to be the causative agents of billions of deaths. So what has helped us to cope with these microbes? With modern medicines and discovery of antibiotics, the transmission of disease and survival of these disease causing agents have been greatly reduced enabling us to better our chances of survival. Now even though we have greatly used medicines and we have depended upon antibiotics to reduce the risk of microbes, there are certain negative impacts of this. What negative impacts are? With increased use of the antibiotics, the resistant form of microbes are also being generated and so antibiotic resistant should be treated as a threat. So, after seeing into what negative impact these microbes do in our lives, should we consider them our enemies? What if all the microbes get wiped out of the entire earth? Microbes cause a great deal of harm on us, but this is true that we can do nothing without them. Microbes have evolved along with us. Some of them not only helps us with our daily processes, but are essential for our survival. We share a symbiotic relationship with the microbes. What do we share? Symbiotic relation so how do we share a relationship with microbes? An average human has millions of microbes including bacteria, virus, fungi, protozoa in them. For every human cell, there are 10 microbial cells, majority of them living in the gut. Now, how do we benefit from these microbes? Microbes inside our body helps to extract energy from food, produces essential vitamins, regulate our immune system, regulate our glucose level, regulate our metabolism and protects us against diseases. Now, Besides directly affecting us, microbes has various other importance. These are antibiotic production, alcohol fermentation, wastewater purification, biogas formation and biofertilizer production. These processes enables us humans to live life efficiently and has largely reduced cost by switching from chemical process to biological processes to obtain the same products easily. We have a concept that the growth of bacteria are undesirable 
as they would cause illness. But we cannot deny that most of the food products are formed by the help of these bacteria, or we can say by the help of useful bacteria. Now, the food products that are formed due to microbial action are a result of fermentation. So, what fermentation is? Fermentation is the process of converting carbohydrates to alcohol or organic acids using microorganism under an aerobic condition. Now, here we can say example of microorganisms can be yeast or bacteria. Now, let us consider some examples as you can see on the screen. Glucose is converted into pyruvate and what is happening here or what is taking place over here? Glycolysis. Glycolysis of glucose is taking place and it is getting converted into pyruvate. Now, what happens to this pyruvate? This pyruvate is further acted upon by various microbes to give rise to a range of fermentation products. So, here you can see that pyruvate is acted upon by propione bacterium which gives carbon dioxide and propionic acid. Now, if any one of you have ever noticed or got a chance to see a block of cheese, you might have observed holes into it. So, here this carbon dioxide is only responsible for the holes in the cheese. Bacillus, lactobacillus, streptococcus, these forms lactic acid which acts in different ways to give curd, cheese and soy sauce etc. Yeast or Saccharomyces, these are responsible for most of the beverage industry in the world. Now here, with the help of yeast or Saccharomyces, we can produce carbon dioxide and ethanol, that is fermentation of alcohol, which is used in making beer and wine. Next, pyruvate when acted upon by Clostridium forms acetone and isopropanol. These are used in making nail polish remover and rubbing alcohol. When pyruvate acted upon by Escherichia and Acetobacter forms acetic acid which are used to manufacture vinegar. Now let us see how microbes help in manufacturing beverages. First, barley seeds are allowed to germinate. Second, they are dried in a kiln before being crushed into a smooth powder in a mill. So, after they are dried, they are crushed into powder. Now, this powder is mixed with water and hops in a large kettle. Now, this mixing of powder water and hops in a large kettle is called brewing. After the brewing process, the ground barley hops mixture is added to a fermenter along with yeast. A constant temperature between 8 to 25 degree centigrade is maintained depending on the type of beer being made. Now, Yeast acts on the sugars of the barley seeds and converts it to ethanol and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is extracted and stored for later use while excess yeast is removed and the mixture which is now called gum beer is allowed to mature and develop a distinct flavor. Now, after maturation, the liquid is now filtered and pasteurized and the carbon dioxide which was stored earlier is now pumped back into it. Now, pumping back of this carbon dioxide, what does it help in? This carbon dioxide helps to give beer a fizzy taste. Now, the finished product is bottled and is sold for consumption.